the presidency of, of Donald Trump. Yeah. He creates this slogan, Make America Great Again, MAGA. Uh, I don't know exactly who was in the room when that slogan was created. I don't know how much uh, time and attention was paid to each word. I think yeah. most people focus on the word great, but mm -hmm. I think the most interesting word is the word again. Uh, and it makes it a historian's question, right? Like, make yeah, America yeah. great again kind of assumes there was a time in the past when America was a better nation than we are today, a time that we want to go back to. Uh, yeah. you, you said that that uh, people assert the Christian uh, founding of the country at certain key moments. And, and, and I don't know if make America great again is the same thing as make America Christian again or not. Yeah. But... Um, as a historian, do you think there was a time in America's history that we were a better nation than we are today? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, just a real quick, some context on that. You know, uh, Ronald Reagan used to say, I want to make America great again all the time. But it, it didn't, you know, for some reason it didn't. He didn't put it on, on a hat. Right? That's why. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Trump, Trump, well, Trump made it his predominant campaign slogan. Yeah. So it's not a new slogan in American politics, but it's certainly again back to the back to the uh the, the moment of Trump. Yeah, the question you ask me, um, you know, and you're definitely right. You know, I've said this, I've been saying this ever since Trump, you know, in that phrase, make America great again. Uh, you know, again, I tend to zero in on the word again. That's how I'm trained to think, right? You know, so. You know, this question of greatness in the past or even goodness in the past or American morality or whatever you want to talk about, I think is, a, is not really a historical question. I think it's a complicated, uh, a complicated one. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, as a historian, you know, I tend to approach this as, um, you know, you tell me, I'm not saying you particularly, but the people who use Make America Great Again, you tell me when America was great, right? And was it the 1950s? Was it the 18th century? Was it the, you know, I don't know. Tell me when America is great. This is how I like to approach this, right? Tell me when America was great. And then let's bring in people who are, you know, ethicists or moralists or biblical scholars or cultural critics or uh, historians, a bunch of people. And then let's talk about the moral questions. Right. So you want to take the 1950s. Right. I think you could make a pretty compelling argument that in the 1950s, uh, the coarseness of our culture, whether it be, you know, the easy access to pornography or the violence on television or the, you know, um, vulgar language, you know, these kinds of things, I think weren't there. And I think I think there's a there's a sense in which, you know, I think it's a legitimate Christian response to be to say, like, I wish, you know, we, we went downhill, you know, we, we're going downhill on that front. On the other hand, you know, I remember saying this exact same thing to, uh, you know, a group of uh, people where a significant number in the room were African-Americans, you know, who said, I get that. Right. But, you know, I don't want to go back. You know, I don't want to. I'm not, you know, I'm not white people tend to be nostalgic, you know, for, you know, that that 1950s uh, home movie of the 4th of July picnic or something. Right. You know, I, I always, I, I, I kid around, you know, my, my mom likes to show me, we watch these old films of growing up in the 1970s. Everything looks so happy, you know, Oh man, if we could just get back to the good old days, you know? And then my mom continues to go on and says things like, Oh, there's uncle Joe and whatever, right before they got divorced. Oh, there's uncle. What I, you know, Oh, this must've been right before he got cancer. You know, I'm like, mom, shut up. You know, this is, this is, you know, you're taking away my nostalgic uh, longings. But you bring um, up a good point because um, we have this romantic or a view of yeah. the past, a nostalgic view of the past, rose-colored glasses. And I guess it depends on who you are, who your yeah. grandparents were, great-grandparents were, whether you want to go back. Because in the 1950s, we've talked about how there's this marriage between the church and state in a new and powerful way. And yet... Uh, black people didn't have the legal right to to vote, that we were still living yeah. under Jim Crow laws. If you're a woman yeah. in the 1950s, you had far fewer opportunities than you have today. Yeah. So Christians if you're a woman, how far do you, yeah. How far do you want to go back if you're a woman? Seriously. Right. How far do you want to how far do you want to, you know, what, what was that? What did it look like for you in those golden days? So I think in some ways this 
this make America great again is a very kind of nostalgia, you know, it plays on that kind of white nostalgia. Right. And I think, I think nostalgia is an, is a, a very narcissistic way of understanding the past because, you know, when you're nostalgic, it's usually you're nostalgic for something that is, is, you know, memorable to you and people who are nostalgic about the past, as opposed to say historians who engage the past are not thinking about their own experience in the context of the way others, you know, and, and you know, the way others are experiencing. And I think thinking about others and their plight is a, is a, is a healthy and Christian response to the past, right. So, as opposed to this narcissistic, you know, well, it was good for me. I don't care about anyone else. <laughs> 